The magnificent stained glass windows in St. Bridget's Church in Amherst are part of the rich heritage and legacy of the parish community. Last fall, as part of the parish's 150th anniversary, parishioners learned more about the fascinating history of these treasures from a well-known stained glass conservation consultant. Steve Kiltonic visited the downtown Amherst Church and spoke to the former North Adams resident about the St. Bridget's renowned Munich-style windows. One striking feature of St. Bridget's Church in Amherst is the series of stained glass windows that grace its interior. The windows were installed when the church was dedicated in 1925 by Bishop Thomas O'Leary, who then renamed the parish after the Irish saint. Father John O'Malley commissioned the windows to be manufactured by Franz Meyer and Company of Munich, Germany. From the mid-18th to early 19th century, Meyer was the leading designer and provider of stained glass windows in Catholic churches around the world. Its popularity among Catholics grew when the German firm became the stained glass artist to the Holy See, receiving the title of Pontifical Institution of Art from the Vatican in 1892. On September 20, 2020, Julie Sloan, a nationally recognized stained glass conservation consultant, presented a lecture on St. Bridget's windows as part of the parish's 150th anniversary, which is being celebrated this year. The windows portray 11 of the important events in the life of Christ, including the presentation of Jesus in the temple, the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth, the nativity, one with the three wise men, the other with shepherds, the wedding feast at Cana, the resurrection, the annunciation by the angel Gabriel, the ascension of Christ into heaven, the transfiguration on Mount Tabor, the Last Supper, Jesus with doubting Apostle Thomas, Jesus curing the paralyzed man, and the flight to Egypt, which was adopted in 1992 by the United States Historical Society for its commemorative plate. Raised Catholic in upstate New York, Sloan hails from a family of architects and builders. As a young girl, she often visited relatives in Elmira, who took her to the Corning Museum of Glass. In 1982, after receiving a bachelor's in art history, Sloan pursued a master's in historic preservation at Columbia University. I was looking for a thesis and a class in stained glass was offered. And when I asked the teacher, okay, this is how you make stained glass, but how do you restore it? He said, oh, he didn't know. So great, you know, here's a subject that, that the teacher doesn't even know how to do. So I wrote my thesis on the conservation of stained glass. This was the beginning of her love affair in stained glass conservation, which eventually led to her establishing her own stained glass consulting business. Over the years, Sloan has authored or co-authored numerous books on stained glass, including Conservation of Stained Glass in America. She also presents seminars and lectures extensively on stained glass history and conservation. American-made stained glass is her specialty. My mission is to uh, increase the appreciation of, of 19th and 20th century stained glass in the United States. In order to get people to take care of their windows, I have to I have learned that I, I have to build ownership, and it's not I, I do that by teaching people about the history of the windows and how they're made, and you know trying to deepen appreciation that it's not just pretty religious pictures or pretty civic pictures, whatever. That it's it's a material that does need to be conserved properly. Meyer of Munich was an enormous studio that employed over 300 workers, each of whom performed a specific task. You'd have people um, whose only job was to cut glass. You'd have people whose only job was to paint faces or to paint flowers or to paint architecture. You'd have people whose only job was to glaze the window together and people whose only job was to waterproof it. And, and that was common. The first Meyer stained glass windows in Massachusetts were installed in Boston's Catholic churches during the 1850s. It's a highly detailed, highly sentimentalized, um, good biblical stories. And usually they, they could produce an entire program, The Life of Christ. And that's generally what you see in, in Catholic churches as opposed to Protestant churches. Although windows could be similar from one church to the next, each is made with slight variations depending on the individual artist. One of the interesting things about um, St. Bridget's is that there is no window of the crucifixion, and I can't tell you why. 
It, it goes from the Last Supper to the Resurrection. One of the fascinating things to me about St. Bridget's Windows is that under every scene is a cherub's head in the middle, and every single one of them is different. So they were obviously painted individually, they are not stenciled, they're not silk screened, they're, they're all these cute little individual angels. There are also various smaller windows that depict saints, including St. Saint Francis Xavier, St. William, St. John the Evangelist, and St. Cecilia. Three of St. Bridget's windows feature the Meyer signature prominently at the bottom of each window. Father John Smeagol has been admiring the Meyer windows for nearly 20 years from the altar. Anyone that comes to the church for the first time is, has to be impressed not only with the windows but all the architecture and the, the sculpture that's here. For Father John, the windows are more than just beautiful art. It's just an amazing construction of what the life of Christ was really like. And it becomes a, a teaching tour, tool. You know, anytime you have a, a Christmas or Easter or any of, the, any of the sacraments, the windows become a, a great teaching tool of what Christ's life was like and why, why he was here. Father John extended an invitation to Sloan after Sloan's cousin, parishioner Chris Nelson, asked if she would be willing to speak on the windows during the parish's anniversary. Close to 40 people listened intently to Sloan's Soup to Nuts PowerPoint presentation. She touched on Meyer and Company's history, the manufacturing of stained glass, and the history of St. Bridget's windows, all to deepen an appreciation of the windows, not only as art, but as objects. Sloan discussed the window depicting the resurrection. This is the focal point, the beneficent face of the Savior doing what he came here to do. He carries the banner of heaven, and behind him are the three crosses on Golgotha. But if you take a moment to look at other details, you'll be richly rewarded. Here are the two soldiers who were guarding the tomb, one in blue armor on the left, who's almost hidden in the shadow of Christ and seems to be just waking up. The other in yellow, holding his shield up against the brilliance of the Lord. At the very bottom of each window is a framed panel with a passage that identifies the scene. This is the one that goes with the resurrection window, quoting the Gospel of St. Matthew. The others painstakingly researched the biblical time period to make sure all the flower, fauna, and other vegetation was accurately depicted. Another aspect that I find interesting in looking at windows like these is the faces. Although they are idealized, they do depict real living people, the models used by the window's designers. Sometimes we'll see the same person depicted more than once in a window. These two guys are clearly based on the same model, a fellow with hollow, craggy cheeks. Sloan noted that the face of Jesus is also not portrayed the same in various images. Many of their images were based on religious paintings, some from the Renaissance or the Baroque age, but many created by a group of 19th century German painters who lived in Rome and called themselves the Nazarenes. The average lifespan of stained glass windows is approximately 100 years. Usually it's the lead that holds the glass pieces together which deteriorates over time. In 1995, 13 of St. Bridget's windows were taken apart, re-leaded, and restored by our stained glass restorations in Hamden. Sloan praised the parish for maintaining the windows over the years. St. Bridget's is fortunate to have such wonderful windows, and I commend you for the taking such good care of them. In this, your 150th anniversary year, let us hope they will continue to bring you joy and inspiration for another 150 years. Although St. Bridget's anniversary year coincides with the pandemic, parishioners welcomed a silver lining during troubled times. Magnificent stained glass windows for all to admire and appreciate long after the masks are gone. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. At least two other parishes in the Springfield Diocese have Franz Mayer windows gracing their churches, St. Peter in Great Barrington and St. Joseph's in Stockbridge. If you think your parish may also have Mayer windows, look for the telltale signature at the bottom of one of the windows and let us know. Priceless works of art for sure, and St. Bridges will continue to celebrate their 150th anniversary on Monday, February 1st with a very special Mass and event entitled Celebrating Catholic Hope. For more information, you can call the parish at 
256-6181.